So, welcome back to another episode. On today's episode, we're actually not going to be talking about a video game, per se. We're here to actually talk about a book. Yes, a book. Ernest Klein's Ready Player One. Now, before you, you switch channels or turn off this video and go, I don't read books, I don't want to know about that. Honestly, I don't want to say, I'm not, I'm not a huge reader these days, I'm very pretty busy, but man, this book is nothing short of incredible. And uh, I personally have to thank uh, Metal Jesus Rocks, he came on the podcast and he told us all, you have to read this book. And I was like, oh, okay, and I wasn't really moved, I was like, yeah, he, you know, he's really into this book, that's cool. Yeah. And uh, I kind of got off the podcast and I downloaded the audiobook off iTunes and I just started listening to it. And 15 minutes, just give this book, give the audiobook 15 minutes, you'll be sucked in. I, I listened to 16 hours of this audiobook and from yeah. beginning to end and it was incredible over the course of a week. Now, how did you find out about this book? Well, it's the weirdest thing, but between the podcast and Metal Jesus Rocks, uh, my father of all people uh, read it and told me I had to find it. There were so many people kept telling me I needed to find this book and, and that I had to read it, that it, it, it eventually dawned on me that maybe I should pick it up, and mm. I couldn't put it down. I could not stop. I think it took me three days yeah. to read the entire thing. I just was, I just could not get away from the book. And it's really funny. We got on the phone and we're just like gushing like fanboys talking about the book and that's when we knew there was something special about this book and uh, this book is all about the 80s, it's, you know, yeah. Well, the basic setup on this, Ernest Cline, uh, some people might know him as the author of the movie Fanboys, which was excellent and highly entertaining but before he wrote that he was doing a lot of uh, spoken word public appearances writing a lot of uh, articles for blogs and his focus is 80s pop culture it's oh, yeah. his thing and this book shows that it is a love letter to anyone who grew up during that era or who has any interest in especially nerd culture of the 80s it's right here it's incredible now the audiobook is read by Will Wheaton and it's really good. He does an excellent job narrating. I was like, just sucked right into the story uh, through his narration of the book. I thought it was great, but why don't you give these guys like a, we promise you, no spoilers. No spoilers. Not a nope. one. Mm -mm. Uh, what Rob will describe is the first, probably the 10 minutes of the book, which you read anyways, and this is the setup of the story only. So it's not of the adventure and all that great stuff, and uh, it's a hell of a story. So the book is set in a dystopian future. Basically, all of Earth's energy reserves, all the fuel reserves are gone. And so the world has fallen into economic collapse. There's very little energy to go around, a lot of people living in absolute poverty, and there's a lot of people living in what are called stacks, that are giant stacked up mobile homes. They're just welded together and sort of braced up as best as they can. And it's, it's a really kind of a dark, unpleasant future. Yeah, it's really horrible, actually. Oh. It was really, yeah, you just disturbed reading the beginning of it, for sure. Now, one escape that a lot of people have is something called the Oasis. And it's a virtual reality universe. There's thousands upon thousands of planets in it. It's kind of like a cross between an MMO and social networking. People can log in, they can have nine to five jobs in the Oasis, they can uh, just play and level up, they can do combat, they can go to school, they can get a full education. So it's like an escape, a second life, an escape from reality, but it's also absolutely key to almost everyone's survival on the planet. Now the Oasis was created by a guy named James Halliday and he grew up during the 80s. He grew up loving video games, music, the pop culture, the movies, science fiction, all of these things, and he used a lot of that to create the Oasis. Now, inside of that, he was also obsessed with Easter eggs in games. The outset of this book, James Halliday passes away, and the day he passes away, a viral video hits the Oasis broadcast network. And it's a video of him as a young man explaining about the history of Easter eggs in games and his love of the 80s. And finishes with the fact that he has no family, he has no, no real close friends, no, no next heirs. of kin, yeah. no heirs. Yeah. And he says that somewhere in the entirety of the Oasis he's hidden an Easter egg. And the first person to find it gets his entire empire. The fortune, the controlling interest in his company, yeah. everything. And it starts the whole world. 
on this hunt for the Easter egg. Everyone becomes completely obsessed with the 80s pop culture, movies, TV shows, video games, old computers, science fiction, books, anything to do with the 80s, everyone starts memorizing it and getting to know it. And this outset of the adventure is a young guy living in absolute destitution, totally poor, who dreams of being the first guy to make a step on that journey and how he becomes the first guy to make the first step on mm -hmm. that journey. Now, the person who actually wins would win his entire fortune, which is like $240 billion. So that's why the entire planet is all trying to find uh, this Easter egg. Now, that consists of finding three keys to three secret doors. And as we begin the adventure, five years has passed and nobody has found anything. And that's where our story starts. And man, I tell you, I'm so stupid. Actually, it shivers because yep. that, that first bit just sucked me in. I was like, oh my God. And, and it's wonderful. Like, we don't want to say everything and stuff, but there's Dungeons and Dragons in this. There's, you know, old school video games, oh. old school TV show references, like, all the stuff that we absolutely love. So yeah. they talked about like family ties, things like Lady Hawk. One of the few places you'll see them reference Hawk the Slayer. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. Musical references from 80s bands that you just can't believe. And what's amazing about how he's written this book is he understands not everyone who reads it is going to be as versed in this culture. True. This is like an encyclopedia of 80s pop culture because he explains a lot of it as well. Mm -hmm. So for those that are interested that don't already know it, you can learn a lot about the origins of video games and the origins of a lot of this culture just by reading it. So it's yeah, and, 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 and it is, and the great thing is, is for people like us, we got 95% of the references. Uh, we were, I, was, I couldn't believe how much I got. I was like, I know that, I know that. I know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. But for me and Kim listened to it, she didn't. She grew up in the later 80s, so she didn't understand all the references, but she still enjoyed the core story. So you don't need to know the, uh, the 80s references to enjoy the story. You'll enjoy it just for the story alone. And uh, the cool thing is, if you read the book and you love it like we do, the great thing is there's a movie in the works for this. Yep. Now, what I read is he's actually, uh, Ernest Klein is actually writing the script himself, which is a wonderful thing to write the book than be to write the script. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's gonna change some things because there's so many references to so many TV shows, movie culture references that to get the licensing for all that would be uh, almost impossible. Good so he's had to change a few things, but uh, I can't wait to see this movie, uh, but, you know, in the future, but for you guys, I know we always talk about old games and stuff like that. We never come on here talking about, like, a book, you know, type of thing like this, but we were so moved. We really were that we really wanted to share it with as many of you guys as possible because it's it's such a great read. It's such a wonderful, wonderful story. And uh, we're not sponsored by Ernie Klein at all or anything like that. <laughs> we're doing it for the pure love of a wonderful story and uh, being fans of video games that we are, so. Guys, uh, we love this book. Can't, yes. can't yeah, we can't uh, highly recommend it enough. Also, uh, uh, I would like to say thank you to Ernie Klein for writing it because this is such a love letter to people of our generation. Like, I was in tears at points at how amazing and how nostalgic all of this felt. So, honestly, it, for those that you want to learn about the 80s and that culture, read it. Let it inspire you to look things up. It gives you a million Google searches you can do to find things. Uh, Go out, buy it, download the audiobook, whatever you have to do, experience this because it is so worth it, guys. Totally. So, guys, hopefully you enjoy the book. Leave us a comment below if you've read it and uh, spread the word on uh, Ready Player One. I think everybody should definitely read this book. It's fantastic. So, anyways, guys, until next time.